camera I awkwardly placed in the uh, vain attempt of making you think that I actually just walked through the door out of coming from a outside place instead of me filming this to trick you. Uh, <laughs> welcome to my apartment. Um, I am going to do a sewing space tour in addendum, I feel, to actually doing a apartment tour, say tour like 1500 different times, which would be a little bit, uh, a little bit farther off currently, because reasons. Um, <laughs> I am now in my entryway, it is very tight as you can see, and there is a plant light currently happening right now because uh, th these are where my plants are. This is a green onion, by the way. I'm gonna turn that off because we don't need that right now. Psych, the plant light is great for showing you my dark, dark, dark entryway fabric stash because if it's like this, even then the incandescent of it all is just oh, gorge. This is my yarn stash currently and I know you think that that is not a lot but actually this has some of the hanks in it and this has my uh, current projects and this has patterns on it because I needed to dig through the pattern bin over here. This is all heavyweight stuff, heavyweight flannels, knits, and wools. This is mostly linens, but this is uh, a wool that couldn't fit over there, so I put it over here. And then we have lightweight cottons and some monks cloth in here for some reason. And then we have our main wool section and then fancy fabrics, which is basically all the polyester and this is silk. Uh, and all the polyester and silks you could ever really desire. And then we move to monstrosity number one. Um, yeah, <laughs> knitting needle storage. Uh, yeah, <laughs> monstrosity number two is basically loose bolts of fabric. These bolts, yeah, and then piles and piles of shit on top of it along with like yarn that I was going to wind for Nadia and like this black cotton that I was going to press today but then I didn't and that's bags bag my beautiful Captain America um, backpack that I love to death and has wings has wings <laughs> I love Oh my god, Stan Sam Wilson, okay? Further into here, this is where I keep all of my fabric scraps. Welcome. This is also where I keep my foot pedal because my sewing machine is actually right here. I usually, when I am using it, I usually use it like this. And then when I'm not using it, I put it back. Um, these two boxes are my doll boxes. These are where my doll modification stuff goes. Um, I currently have a project. Is it creepy? Yep. Um, but it'll be cute later. This is, well, this is my on-the-go sewing bag. And then this is, uh, my pencil case. I have some things that I need to post off to my Mother-in-law, mother-in-law, please don't watch this because you're getting spoiled. And then we have the, like, cacophony of whip knits. This is the muscle burl hat. This is a brioche scarf that I'm making out of a rainbow fabric. And this is a uh, tank top made out of Remix Light. And then I usually have my bullet journal here just so that I can have... It's just so that I have it... In, within reach so that I could like take shit off and stuff. Um, and then I usually have my sewing project. My current sewing project is actually a spoiler for Kosi. Uh, I wonder if I'm gonna learn how to like blur the screen so that you can't see it. But yeah. Anyway, sneaky peeky. Woo! And then I have my main knitting project that I work on when I am uh, watching YouTube videos. 
And then we have my water bottle. And this is my sketchbooks, my language study stuff. And this is where I keep my, uh, my tablet for title cards. And this is where I keep my drive for footage. And then we have Eeyore and Isabel hanging out. Eeyore I got when I was first in Minsk, and Isabel I got from my sister for a Christmas present a long, long time ago. And this is my setup. I'll have all of my tech set up in the description. I will not recommend this laptop. This laptop sucks dick. But uh, that's basically it. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. And this is my... Um, little pegboard which I usually I usually hang up some yarn that really inspires me on this little hook. I have a scully from my time at working at a haunted house. I have some props here and then this is where I usually keep my scissors uh, so that they're in reach and then I just have sentimental stuff as well as some schematics for patterns. Um, but yeah. So, what I am going to do is I am going to also, in this video, answer the CosTube 22 questions, but um, while also knitting at the same time, because, I mean, like, knitting chats are cute and all, and I want to do that, so, yeah. Um, first question. What is your favorite genre of costuming? Um, historical, mostly with some like regional styles in there, um, as well as some like fantasy. But I usually tend to stick to the Victorian and Edwardian era only because they have a wide plethora of things and it doesn't give me dysphoria. What are your favorite materials to work with? Uh, light linen and like kind of like linen on the lighter side are both just chef's kiss. What is your dream event or photo shoot opportunity? Anything with wildflowers, um, some historical sites, not all of them because some of them are dens of racism. Um, also speaking of dens of racism, probably Bath, England. But, you know, I'd have to be careful about that. And uh, group photos, I'd, I'd love to do. I was thinking about doing, um, what is it? Like Christmas cards with like me and Kostya in costume, which would be super cute, not gonna lie. Um, so yeah, something with more than one person involved would be great. Drape, draft, or commercial pattern? I'm a draper, and I don't know, I think drafting has too much math for me, and commercial patterns do not carry my attention for long, so I tend to drape my own patterns, unless it's like a structured garment, like a corset, then I'll probably take a non-commercial, non-big three pattern and use that. Are you team cut or team trace? I don't specifically know what we're talking about when we're talking about like Team Cut, Team Trace because I will more than likely just like trace around the pattern that's on the flat. Um, of course when I start looking for scissors my English just fails me. Anyway. Um, no, like, I don't really get what we're trying to get at because I'm a put pattern on, on fabric. If it's net, then I will, um, trace around it in, like, a chalk and then add the seam allowance. And that's what I usually do when, um, I, that's what I usually do when I, you know, like, and working with net patterns, which is more often than not these days. But, um, yeah, it just depends. I'm not pro this or against that right now. 
Um, what skill would you like to learn? Multi-frame machine embroidery, fucking like that shit impresses me so goddamn much and I tried doing that once and I failed miserably. <laughs> so I'm just, I just want to, I want to learn how to do that. Fucking goddamn bedtime reminder, stop even. Okay. Also noted here is couture handwork and getting into the habit of finishing things fully. Um, the thing is, is when I'm making a costume and like when I started making my own clothes for my own wardrobe, I really didn't like finish them correctly. So a lot of the ones like I'll insert b-roll if I want to. Um, there will be like pieces in my wardrobe that are just like fraying to little pieces because I'm just like I love them a lot and I wear them a lot and uh, they're cute so they get washed a lot. So there's that. How many pieces are lur lurking in your UFO bin? <laughs> the most unconventional material you have ever used. If you were there for my uh, 10 subscriber milestone, uh, you would have seen me using a bin bag to make a casual two-piece. It was something that I am not proud of and I really don't like how I did that. Also, I was probably manic. Which era or genre would you still like to make a costume of? I do have a lot of um, ideas for a Slavic fantasy garment, like um, just kind of making a fantasy garment loosely uh, based upon Slavic garb and stuff like that, as well as like pre-post Viking Slavic, like early Slav. And, um, like Polish Lithuanian hussars, but that's all kind of just like what's in the forefront of my head. Like, when I want to do something, I'll just flat out like do it, or if not, I'll just like put it on the back burner. So, this is only the things that I am thinking about doing and might do. Biggest sewing crafting pet peeve. Uh, gatekeeping? Closed mindedness, not being able to learn from others, I'm always right syndrome is also a big one there. Um, y'all. Y'all. Come on. How has the pandemic changed what slash how you sew? During the start of the pandemic, I had this like big manic episode where I just like um, was sewing a lot because I was staying home a lot and I didn't I didn't really have a lot of avenues of entertainment other than you know doing my own thing and I've been I've been sewing for a long time so now with like being able to be outside and being able to work uh, with obvious precautions. Uh, I am trying to be more mindful about my sewing and about how much fabric I buy and if it's uh, bought locally or ethically or uh, secondhand. So that's kind of how it has changed a little bit. What did you do slash learn in the past year that you were the most proud of? Um, so you know how I did that thing where I um, edited very wild uh, zoom-ins on my face while uh, the, a, a kazoo rendition of the X-Files theme song plays in the background? I was going to do it for this one, but then I forgot. So... <laughs> Best sewing tool you've ever invent invested in. Pattern weights and clear acrylic rulers are fucking lifesavers. Like, you do not know how many ruffles 
that I have made completely and utterly just like fantastic because of a cr clear acrylic ruler. Like, y'all. Most useless sewing tool you've ever invested in. Um, hot take, a seam ripper. The thing about seam rippers is that I just go at it with tiny little snips and then actually like rip the seams out. I don't use seam rippers. I don't use them at all, actually. Most satisfying technique. Um, yeah, tucks made with ladder stitch. I just find it fascinating and I I don't I don't want to say I love doing it because I don't I really don't but also I just it's really nice do you pick a project and then procure materials or collect materials and let them speak to you I'm a pick of the project person and then procure materials but a lot of the times I will end up not making that for some reason so I still try to be mindful about what's in my stash and how I can use it even if the project like fizzles out and I don't actually get to doing it. What are your goals slash plans moving forward? Um, have fun, fuck the system, uh, yeah that's basically it. Scissors or rotary blade? I, I've said this before, I would literally cut my hand open and die if I used a rotary blade. Like, I do not get people who can do that. And also, I just think about pizza cutters every time I use a rotary blade and it's just... No, not, not my thing. Not really my thing. But you do you, I guess. Do you have any sewing assistants slash pets? Uh, this has changed since I have written this script. I did foster a dog for a little bit. I was gonna foster to adopt, but then it turned out that he was not a good fit. My tiny ass apartment with all these feral cats running around. So I um, decided that he had a better chance getting what he needed at the no-kill, at the no-kill shelter that uh, I found him at. So he's, I'll, it was a fun learning experience and I'm glad that I got to be able to like take care of a dog, but I realized that the best dog for me is a cat. So I might just get a cat once I have money to pay my pet deposit and pet rent and all this other sorts of stuff. And once I have enough money to give Kostya an insane amount of uh, anti antihistamines because he's allergic to cats. <laughs> Tea, coffee, or chocolate? Um, this has changed from last time because I am actually a tea person now. Uh, surprise, surprise. The thing is, is that uh, when I was working at a haunted house, I really banged up my throat to the point where I had vocal fry up the wazoo for like a month afterwards. But um, the thing that I would always get, uh, like every time I woke up in the morning, I would have Earl Grey tea with steamed lemonade. And that did wonders for my throat. And then I just got into the habit of uh, drinking uh, dark tea in the morning. So shit, I mean. <laughs> That's kind of how it uh, happened. Okay, uh, final question. Who do you watch or listen to while sewing? Here's my shout out time. Here's Sunny's top hits. Um, Gab Smolders, uh, their Stardew Valley Let's Play is fucking immaculate. Um, Carrie Cakes, um, they are a foreigner living in South Korea and they like travel all around the the country and outside of the country as well. Um, aesthetic, 10 out of 10. Sedona Christina, um, they have this adulting diaries, like living alone diaries, that's what it is. They have this living alone diaries that uh, I really relate to now that I am living alone. 
Um, Minnie Small is a uh, illustrator, but she posts like these um, these hour long like real time paint and chats, and I fucking love them. <laughs> I will I eat that shit up. If Minnie Small Small is actually like fucking listening to me. Could you post another, please? <laughs> but, um, I know she just got married, so that's probably, uh, why she hasn't posted in a little bit. Um, Well Love Knits. Well Love Knits, um, she is an amazing knitwear designer who is also having a baby. So, she's been posting a lot of these, um, knitting podcasts and knit in chats where she just like sits around does what I'm doing right now and knits and I find it really cozy and she also has some like really nice well made like tutorial content on there as well but yeah and then uh, final shout out Elsa Ray and Baron uh, they are homesteading YouTubers who are making their own house currently, which I find fascinating as a person who wants to own land and build their own house one day. But uh, that is all of my shout out time. So I'm going to tell you about what I'm actually doing this for. Uh, Costume Symposium 2022 will take place Thursday 25th to Sunday the 28th. The event takes place on multiple platforms, both YouTube, Instagram, and Discord, and uh, will be free to the public. So, um, I have a couple things planned for COSI. Um, specifically, I'm just gonna name drop it. I'm talking about my mental health and how it affects how and why I costume. How and why? Um, and I'm also going to be making um, some beautiful hand-sewn Edwardian, like, late Victorian underwear. And I hope that you want to join me on that. So I'm gonna go and I'm going to finish the heel of these socks because that's my goal for today is just to finish that up. It's almost done, by the way. Um, I just need to get uh, my gear going and just knit, knit, knit. But I'll give you some B-roll of this, and I shall see you uh, during Cozy. Yeah.